Hello there. <laughs> this is Robin, RobinBremer.net, and today I am sitting in the Sprint parking lot while my son is in there um, working on his phone. So I'm sitting here, and hopefully he won't come blasting in my car <laughs> complaining about something while I'm doing a live video. Anyway, today I wanted to share with you about what to do when you go to the Courts of Heaven. The Courts of Heaven is something that I'm fairly new at, that I'm learning about, and that is life-changing. And sometimes I get, well, the book that's coming out that I'm writing right now comes out June 1st or thereabout. And, and I wanted to get a grip on how the Courts of Heaven relate to uh, the New Covenant. And that's kind of what that book is about. But today, I felt as though a lot of us get frustrated when we go to the Courts of Heaven. <clears throat> Hi, guys. We're not really sure what to repent of when we get there. We have we have situations in our life when we pray and pray and pray, we confess, we rejoice, we we're, and we don't get results. And usually it's because Satan has something legally against us in, and we have to go to the court of heaven. Well, you ask God, Holy Spirit, revealer of truth, show me what it is that Satan found a loophole or found some generational sin or something in my life or the history of my life that is causing me to Satan have a legal foothold in this area of my life. And after you repent of so much stuff, you can't think of anything else that to repent of. And, but the problem still isn't solved. And this is kind of what I want to talk about today. One thing that I really learned that was very valuable and precious to me is pay attention to your dreams. Uh, because your dreams are the Holy Spirit or your own spirit talking to you, revealing truths to you, revealing what direction you need to go of what you might need to repent of and dreams are pretty much you need to interpret them but you interpret them according to what those symbols mean to you and if you get stuck you can look it up but pretty much it's what the symbols mean to you <clears throat> and not to get off track but here is a confession that God told me when I take communion um, I confess that God has given me a spirit of wisdom knowledge and discernment in all truths and all skill just like he did Daniel, that I have the ability to, to interpret dreams because the Holy Spirit lives in me. And he gave that to Daniel, so I have the right to have it too. So I confess that. So number one is pay attention to your dreams, make the confession, and start believing that you have the wisdom in you to interpret those dreams. <laughs> Thank you for all those little hearts there. <clears throat> you have the ability in you to interpret those dreams. Now those dreams could become very, very important for you in getting victory in the courts of heaven because it's basically a setup you your father is the judge Jesus your brother is, is your advocate or the person that is wants you to win and is fighting for you and then the devil is the um, accuser and he's always accusing the brother the brother and he's always accusing us he's finding something down our history or in our line and I got on a sidetrack, so if anyone wants to remind me of where I was heading with that, <laughs> I forgot what I, I was getting at. Oh, anyway, confess confess that you can interpret these dreams, and these dreams will show you what you need to repent of, because the devil is tricky. He'll go all the way down the generational line. Well, today, this morning, I had a really good session in the courts of heaven. I wanted to tell you about it, because I really think it's something that you would benefit from. I was repenting for... There's lists that you can buy that you can not buy, but you can get that you can repent from uh, Indian curses, German curses, war curses, um, just all kinds of curses, all kinds of things that you can repent of that your family might have been doing that you don't know about. Animal sacrifice, child, child sacrifice, altars, um, all kinds of stuff. So there's lists. Uh, Terry Spencer is a good one. You get some information from him. Eon Clayton and a lot of them. You can get a list of what to repent from. If you're in deliverance ministry, you can get a list, the deliverance book, go on the uh, internet and get um, some deliverance, uh, what you want to be delivered from, the curses and so on. But anyway, I was just like, okay, God, what else can I repent of? I can't think of anything else. And he brought to my mind <clears throat> my history that I know. So what I'm saying to you is you know of certain histories. For example, my grandfather abused me. My grandfather sexually abused me when I was a child or molested me. And I remember my mother saying that 
this same guy, which is her father, which she was afraid of, said that he verbally and physically abused her little brother who was a, a retarded or slow, whatever you want to, whatever the proper name is today, that he would kick him and he would call him names. And, and so God brought that to my remembrance because I, I didn't even think of those things. So because it was something that I knew about my history and God put it together so that I could repent of it in, for my, my sake through my grandfather. So when we were in the courts of heaven, he reminded me that my, my grandfather was very abusive to his son, which is my mother's brother, <clears throat> that he verbally abused him and he kicked him so that I needed to repent of a spirit of rejection, a spirit of abuse, a spirit of, um, anger, hate, a spirit of, uh, all those things related to a bullying all those spirits then he reminded me of my grandmother his the wife of my grandfather that abused me probably abused some of my other relatives that I don't know but he reminded me of my grandmother my grandmother always made these delicious cakes and all the time I assumed that she didn't know about this abuse going on and the Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance that they had lost their first son, their firstborn son in the war. And so <clears throat> that caused, and, and not only did that happen, but um, he, my grandfather was, always in, was also in some kind of war. And so I could go, because I knew that, and the Holy Spirit reminded me of that, my history. I could go back in my history and repent um, for those sins. Because I couldn't think of anything to repent of. But when the Holy Spirit reminded me of that, and he reminded me of my grandmother had raised these children. And this one child that was slower than the rest, that was always kicked around, that was physically kicked, I was told, and abused and treated cruel and told he was nothing, he was worthless, he was worse than a dog. Well, my grandmother was right there. They were married, so she knew that was going on. So I saw my grandmother in a different light and I was thinking, well, maybe she baked these cakes for us all the time because that was her way of repentance or her way of uh, being nice to her grandchildren. I don't know if she knew about the sexual abuse going on or molestation in my life or if it happened to one of my female cousins or not or any other relatives, but um, he brought that to my remembrance. So I had to repent for my grandmother seeing the abuse uh, and all the things in my imagination and mind that could have happened during that abuse. Was she trying to cover for her husband? Was she, was she involved in that abuse? Was she feeling guilty? Was she feeling abandoned? All those spirits came into play. So the Holy Spirit showed me the more stuff I can find out about my own history, the more he can reveal to me the the sin generational sins that I can repent of for their sake which is really for my sake and so I thought that was very interesting so when you go to the courts of heaven and you have these lists of things to repent to and one or two of them bring tears to your eyes or make you feel like sobbing you know that you hit home base that that's one of the areas that was holding back your harvest was holding back your answer to prayer and also when you get through all those lists and, and there's nothing more you can think of to repent of, do some research, some natural research into your history. Think about events, trauma, tragedy, um, divorces, things that have happened in not just your past, but your parents' past and your grandparents' past. And where were they from? Were they from Germany? Did they fight in the war? Were they Indian or whatever? And then the more you know, the more you can repent of. And the more you repent of, you go back in history and you repent of those sins that your your forefathers, your grandfathers, your great grandfathers have committed, the more you are released. So, so the main purpose of this video is to tell you that two things. When you run out of all kinds of things to repent of involving the issues that you're not getting your prayer for, and, and do not think that the issues are even related. I mean, you could have money and financial issues and it can be, um, it can be related to a great, great grandfather, um, uh, got caught cheating on his wife, having nothing to do with money. So you will become very surprised when, as the Holy Spirit reveals to you, 
the issues, where your issues come from, uh, where the root really is. So be very open when you hear things in your mind um, that are unrelated. Repent of them, whatever it is, anyway, and ask God to cover it in the blood of Jesus. So number one I wanted to say in this video was um, find out if after you repented of everything you can repent of that might have to do with what issue in prayer you're not getting answered then look into your natural history and then start imagining yourself in that person's place like if for example you have a history of a, a grandfather that um, fought in the war okay well think okay if you fought in the war what would be the issues you would be dealing with maybe your wife felt abandonment maybe your children um, died because of some disease and just use your imagination and then start repenting of those things because they lead to other things to repent of in the court of heaven and so the number two thing is you, number one study your history your own family history and get to know a little bit about your histories ask stories ask your father and grandfather and grandparents to tell you stories about their history and about their parents and see like on my other side of my family on my dad's side of the family I know absolutely nothing the generational research I did stops at my grandmother and my grandfather I never knew my grandfather he was sick in bed all the time he lived in the same land as us I don't know nothing about him so uh, I needed to I need to find out uh, from my cousins anything about that side of the family and so as you do your research you'll find out more so research your natural history when you run out of things to repent of when you still have the same situations in your family and then number two um, imagine yourself in the situation and think of everything that you can repent of in that situation and you'll just feel the stress lift you'll feel relief you'll feel um, you'll feel a difference and and then the other thing I wanted to share is God showed me something that I thought was really interesting when I go to the courts of heaven I always try to imagine because your imagination is the key to the supernatural your imagination is the key to heaven so trust your imagination okay so I always try to imagine a courtroom and you relate it to your own experience something you've seen on TV and the judge and the witnesses and so on well God said to me because I'd go to heaven and I wasn't seeing anything and I was getting frustrated and then I'd fall asleep and it was like God I haven't accomplished anything I said God I want to go to the court of heaven I go to the court of heaven through the blood of Jesus and I asked that the accuser reveal to me what he is accusing me of and I fall asleep nothing happens so I think well the Holy Spirit told me that every time you go to the court of heaven you you just because you don't see anything or have any revelation knowledge still go through the procedures because you're actually accomplishing something you're actually getting somewhere just because you don't see it doesn't mean you haven't done anything and I found out going to the courts of heaven isn't like I would like it to be every time I go to the courts of heaven I would like to say okay I repent of this I have this list of five things I can repent of I know I'm getting somewhere well and then I feel relief well it isn't always like that it's it's like peeling an onion off it's it's like it's deliverance in a sense it doesn't come all at once it comes in chunks it comes in layers you have to always go to the court of heaven because Satan is like a lion looking to see who he can devour if he could devour everybody he would but he has to go and do it legally and oh I know one of the things I want to say um talking about legally um, yes the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and and okay but the Holy Spirit showed me this for those of you who are thinking well the blood of Jesus cleansed me for all sin I don't need to go to the court of heaven well you do need to go to the court of heaven because the salvation is for everybody and healing is for everybody but you have to take it by faith you have to receive and understand salvation you have to receive and understand healing you have to receive and understand the courts of heaven how Satan does stuff if you automatically got it because it belonged to you there would be no sicknesses in any Christians there would be no need for deliverance in Christians there would be no need for anything in, because we would have what the blood of Jesus paid for us to have but we have to take we have to take what the blood of Jesus paid for us to take we have to take it by force and by faith so when you go to the courts of heaven take it 
take what belongs to you and apply the blood of Jesus to it. Sometimes at night I'll just lay in my bed and I say, okay, God, I don't even want to go to the courts of heaven. Just God, show me what I need to repent of. Show me some sin. I love to repent. This is so amazing, so fun. I love to repent of generational curses and sins. It's so fun. It's so life-changing. It's so rev revolu whatever that word is. Anyway, and I just lay there and stuff comes to my mind. Words that doesn't even make any sense. I don't even know what they mean. I say, Father, whatever that word means, I repent of it. I'm sorry for it. I ask you to forgive me and my generational line all the way back to Adam for that sin. Cover it in the blood of Jesus. And then when I go to the court next time, that sin's already taken care of down here. Um, I might be in court in the spirit, but I'm just laying in my bed saying, God, show me what I'm being accused of. Show me what I can repent of. And when I was doing that, I was running out of things to repent of. It's like, okay, come on, give me more, give me more. What can I repent of? And that's when I... Um, um, you have dreams and, the, and I've had a couple of dreams and my dreams would reveal to me, oh, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it would really, um, it would really help me to understand. So pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to your imagination, do some study of history, get some books or some lists of, um, of courts of heaven. Terry Spencer is a really good one. Um, if any of you can think, think of some other names of uh, Eon Clayton, I said that already. And um, let's see, there's some really good ones. Um, Abram something, I don't remember his last name. But um, just put some names down there if you know of some. And, and do me a favor. My book comes out in June. Um, give me a good review if you get it. Uh, yeah, Robert Henderson, yes, very good. Ian Clayton, Robert Henderson, um, oh, here, no, that's not my son, um, and some others. I'll try to write them down there, um, but man, it's really helpful. So anyway, robinbremer.net is my website. Um, check out my books on the angels. They tell you about how to do decrees and talk to and command your angels and so forth. Um, and uh, share this videotape with social media site. Get it out there. Uh, help people be blessed uh, with these revelations that God's sharing with me and giving me. Uh, because this really is a blessing to me. And I just get excited and I want to share it to you. So check out my website. Check out my books. And be blessed. And that's it for today. Uh, and Praying Me Me Medic. Yes, he's awesome too. Uh, my website is Robin Bremer. R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R dot -E -E net like catching fish in a net. And if you go on Amazon, or actually if you type my name, Robin Bremer, on Google, you'll have about 16 to 30 pages come up. That's all about me because I have 500, about 500 videos teaching about the Word of God on my YouTube channel and about 200 videos on my puppets and ventriloquism on YouTube. And then all my books, I have written over four dozen, almost four dozen books on walking in the kingdom and the supernatural and the peace and the presence of God. Um, so all my books are free if you get Kindle Unlimited except for my angel books because I'm selling them also on my Facebook site. I, all five books in PDF for $25 which is half the price of what it would be normally. Um, so anyway, that's it. Sorry, I talk a lot. So share it. The book coming out is called Seeing Angels in the Sky. It's in a series. It's number four, I think. And it's called um, um, something about the courts of heaven. Engaging or understanding. Working. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, seeing angels in the sky. And then it's working the courts of heaven. And I think I'm going to have another book after that. Talking more about the courts of heaven and the kingdom of heaven. And how they work together. And I think that's what God's directing me to do after that book. And it, it won't be a, a, a pictures of the angels in the sky book. And I also think that I have so many pictures of angels that I'm going to make one big book without no outlines or anything. Just it'll be like clouds. And it'll be like a puzzle book. You just go through it and find all the pictures of angels yourself. And that way I can bless a bunch of people with a ton of pictures. And uh, the pictures can get out there. And it'll encourage you to look in the sky and see the supernatural too. So my name is Robin Bremer. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.